Welcome to bracket four of the uh, Arena Football League race to the bottom. This uh, time period, 1996 to 1998, actually had 20 teams active, which uh, started to top out when the Arena Football League was most into expansion mode. There were a lot of teams that have to be disqualified for being high quality teams that lasted multiple eras, including the Tampa Bay, the Iowa Barnstormers, the Orlando Predators, the Albany Firebirds, the San Jose Sabercats. But I did give a sort of wild card game to the Grand Rapid Rampage and the Nashville Cats because both of those teams uh, had a lot of good things to them, but ultimately to get to eight teams, I went ahead and gave them a game. And in that uh, game, I just took a look at the records. So the uh, Cats were six and four over the Rampage and uh, they had two Arena Bowl appearances with zero wins. The Rampage, in fact, beat the Cats in Arena Bowl 15. So I'm going to go ahead and send the Cats, the Nashville Cats, to the uh, eligible bracket. And the eligible teams are the South Florida Bobcats, the Anaheim Piranhas, the Portland Forest Dragons, the Minnesota Fighting Pike, the Texas Terror and the Houston Thunder Bears, which I'm going to go ahead and count as one franchise because all they really did was go through a rebranding. The New York City Hawks, the New Jersey Red Dogs, and the Nashville Cats that we put in. So the quarterfinal matchup was the Nashville Cats versus the South Florida Bobcats. Now, again, the Cats had two Arena Bowl appearances, and they still have talk of revival. I think they were a fairly popular franchise in uh, in Tennessee and uh, it's possible that they could come back in maybe the IFL and that would work out well for all. I did also note that they had the 1997 Coach of the Year in Eddie Kayat, whereas the South Florida Bobcats um, had been the Sacramento Attack and the Miami Hooters. They did have a five-year run but between 97 and 98, they had five neutral site games. So they were basically a travel team. And I'm going to send the South Florida Bobcats to the semis. Game number two pitted the Anaheim Piranhas against the New Jersey Red Dogs. Uh, the Piranhas and the Red Dogs played one time, and the um, Piranhas lost by one point at home. The Red Dogs, on, on the other hand, uh, beat the Piranhas by attendance uh, of having an attendance of over 2,000 more people during their one year of coexistence. So I'm going to send the Piranhas to the semis. Then we've got the New York City Hawks against the Portland Forest Dragons. The City Hawks were another New York one-and-done team. They wound up becoming the Sea Wolves and later the Toronto Phantoms. The Forest Dragons, however, had been the Pharaohs and then became the Wranglers. So I'm going to go ahead and send the City Hawks to the semis. Now the, the next game is a strange one because it is the Texas Terror and the Houston Thunder Bears, uh, that's one franchise, versus the Minnesota Fighting Pike. Now the, the Texas Terror, it was a strange cartoonish uh, logo that they had and they must have been trying to get the sort of family market there in Houston but the Houston Thunder Bears I still don't really understand what exactly the Thunder Bear logo was about or how that relates to Houston maybe somebody can uh, explain that to me but for the terror slash Thunder Bears I think a rebranding can be forgiven especially in uh, minor league indoor sports especially if they stay in their home arena the Fighting Pike, on the other hand, uh, were also similarly strange. They were owned by Tom Scallon, who uh, owned the Harlem Globetrotters, which I think might raise some brows today, and the Ice Capades. He was also involved in a 1984 committee to try to bring the USFL to Minnesota. Nonetheless, I'm going to send the Fighting Pike to the semis. And our semifinal matchups are the South Florida Bobcats versus the City Hawks and the Minnesota Fighting Pike versus the Anaheim Piranhas. So with the Bobcats and the City Hawks, the Bobcats had a 25 and 59 overall record with zero playoff appearances, but they did have some longevity having been the Sacramento Attack and the Miami Hooters previously. The City Hawks were a one and done team and really uh, were remarkable only in that they later became the Toronto Phantoms, which I think featured Aaron Garcia 
as one of their quarterbacks. Or no, actually, that's one game where Aaron Garcia played for the uh, Dragons, the New York Dragons, against the Phantoms. But anyway, ultimately, the City Hawks have to go on to our final round. Game two, the Fighting Pike versus the Piranhas. I've got um, the Fighting Pike with a 25 uh, win 59 loss record zero playoff appearances they uh, again had some weird ownership ownership issues and uh, never really got very far in any aspect of the game whether it be their competitive aspect or attendance and the playoffs uh, you know zero zero playoff appearances for the piranhas excuse me the fighting pike uh, go to the finals and that leaves our final matchup with the New York City Hawks versus the Minnesota Fighting Pike. They never played each other. The City Hawks, however, had an average attendance in their single uh, single year of existence of 6,517 at Madison Square Garden, which is really atrocious when you think about that uh, storied venue, whereas the Fighting Pike at least had 8,894 as their average attendance. Of course, we all know that these are sort of false numbers when it comes to minor league indoor sports. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the win to the City Hawks, which makes, makes that our second New York uh, Toilet Bowl winner. Let me know what you think. Please do like, subscribe, and leave your comments with uh, how you feel about our rankings. And I want to thank all those people who have, in fact, uh, gone from here to our main page and clicked on our links, specifically our eBay link. Uh, and it is something that I can see that has actually happened, and we very much appreciate it, and we hope to see you again soon.